everyone, and welcome to this edition of the OTTX Wednesday webinar series. On behalf of all of us at OTTX, I want to thank you for joining us today for the series where we bring you insightful, thought-provoking presentations from across a broad spectrum of OTT-related topics from thought leaders across our industry. Today, we're excited to have with us two executives from Univision, Communications VP of Sales, Natalia Borges, and Sebastian Trujillo who is VP of Digital Avod Sales. Natalia has over 22 years of invaluable advertising and marketing experience with industry leaders Crispin Porter, Boguski, Zubi Advertising, Botanga Media. She's focused much of the time working with brands to recognize, reach, and connect the U.S. Hispanic market. Most recently, Natalia was the Executive Vice President of Marketing for VIX, where she led all integrated sales marketing strategies for the largest independent digital and streaming companies servicing U.S. Hispanics. Sebastian has over 25 years experience in video, revenue growth, and business development, establishing strategic partnerships within the U.S. Hispanic market and Latin America. Trujillo was the director of content sales for BBC Studios in Latin America and the U.S. after managing his own media and entertainment consultancy practice. He's held various senior leadership roles at Univision's Communications and uh, is currently the are including VP of Business Development, SVP Operating Manager of Galavision Network and VP of Network Sales. Uh, we also wanna thank VIX Univision for participating in our webinar series today for their support of OTTX through involvement in events, workshops, roundtable discussions, and of course, as members of the OTTX Board of Directors. Their topic, the, uh, the topic of their talk, talk today, brands are flocking to OTT, so our Hispanic audiences is generated a lot of earnest, a lot of interest, uh, earnest interest from among our members uh, and community. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Natalia and Sebastian from Univision. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone can see my screen. Uh, thank you, Eric, for that introduction. And thank you to everybody for joining us today. Um, happy Wednesday, we're halfway through the week. So that's the good news. Um, excited to talk to you today about um, Hispanic audiences in, in particular. Um, as Eric mentioned, I've spent the, the past 20 years working with brands um, to understand and, and reach this audience uh, and really in, in order to connect with them and ultimately grow, grow market share um, with this consumer. Want to start out, um, let me get my screen. Um, want to start out with uh, just a couple of basics on the audience and, and just the overall opportunity uh, and why why this segment um, is, is so important to, to brands. So when we look at just overall spending power in the U.S., um, today we're at about 1.5 trillion, um, which which is a huge number, um, but it's a number that only continues to grow. When we look at just the last decade, um, you know that growth is about 500 billion, and it's expected to grow even more than that in the next decade. Um, you know, Hispanics are the, the largest minority uh, group in the U.S. Um, you know, when we look at the total population, there are about 18 percent. Um, but the interesting thing is as you start looking at the younger groups, so when you look at millennials, um, that number is 27 percent. And as we start looking even younger at Gen Z, um, it is 35 percent. So it is a growing uh, minority group, um, the and, and it's rather young, as I mentioned. So you know, as we look at those younger generations, as we look at folks that are looking to buy homes, um, get married, um, go to college, um, that number continues to to grow, and it is continued to to do so. And you know, we look at different estimations of the population, um, and and you know how that will continue to grow over the years. Uh, but in general, it it is a minority that. Uh, many believe will, will take over and become a, a majority. Um, when we look at them as a consumer group and sort of, you know, how, how, is, how big is this opportunity and how does it really affect different industries? I think, you know, it is important to kind of just understand how they are approach um, different industries, different services, um, and so, sort of how they approach buying. Um, they, um, Hispanics overall uh, over index in, in devices. Um, they're extremely savvy when it comes to 
uh, things uh, such as internet services, OTT, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, just alone mobile service and, and mobile phone um, devices, you know, they outspend quite a bit. Um, there are many instances where the mobile phone and the tablet is, is their main device. And so, you know, when we look at how to approach and how to connect with them, things like mobile, video, uh, again, OTT are huge and really important and how to reach them. Um, Hispanics approach uh, going to the grocery store and just buying for the household uh, in different ways. So when you think of CPG products or food at home, um, not only are they overspenders, but they are going to, um, to the grocery store and buying uh, in larger groups. So, you know, if we think about how the household uh, and the number of folks in the household, um, that really affects things like food purchases uh, and, and CPG. And so you'll see the numbers here and, and, and those only uh, are expected to grow in, 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 the, in how they over index. Um, apparel and services, again, fashion is, 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 um, is big um, for, for Hispanics. Again, when we look at millennials and Gen Z, those numbers are, are even larger. Um, and then beauty, and I think you know we we could have a whole hour on on Latinas and and beauty and, and that industry um, have always over indexed in how they purchase beauty products and services, um, and and are forecasted to to continue to do so. You know these are just a few. I think we can look at several more industries and and have similar sort of stories. I think one that is important only in in what we're talking about today and and sort of how it plays into content as well. You know, Hispanic audiences um, have the highest rate of movie going. And I know in the past year that that's somewhat of, 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 a, of an event um, or an activity that, that, you know, has sort of been halted. Um, but in the past, um, when we look at Hispanics and content and things like movie uh, opening, uh, opening weekend, um, we over index and, and Hispanics overall uh, in that type of content and, and, and what they're consuming and how they look forward to, to new movies and, and new content. Um, and that's important because we're at a time where, you know, for Hispanics, that identity and that culture identity, seeing themselves in, um, in things like movies, in commercials, in storytelling is really important. It's something that um, specifically we saw last year became more and more important. Um, there was a study uh, that came out last year, actually in Nielsen, uh, and, and a couple of articles actually also in the New York Times where, you know, looking at sort of the experiences that Hispanics have in the U.S. and sort of their stories and how they still remain to be seen uh, on, on a lot of, of screens, whether it's the large screen or, or just, you know, streaming and, and OTT, um, which really provides an opportunity for brands um, and, and, and for, you know, products that are looking to speak to Hispanics. You know, Hispanics are really underrepresented when we look at, you know, the faces and the characters in stories. Uh, but again, you know, they over index in how they're consuming. So there's really an opportunity there when we think about, you know, how we um, talk to this consumer, how we approach this consumer, uh, and really being able to tell their stories and, and really being able to provide for them an opportunity so that they can see themselves and, and others that reflect um, reflect their, their, their stories and, and, and again, their backgrounds. Um, and, and when we look at this disparity, when we look at, you know, things like broadcast and, and cable and even street and services, um, the numbers are, are right there and, and, and uh, they're, they're they're pretty staggering when you think of, you know, 18% of the population, Generation Z, if you're thinking 35% of this young group of, uh, of, of US, um, of the US audience, um, and only 5% uh, of the time that they're looking and consuming content, they're, they're seeing themselves. Um, you know, when we think of how they consume content um, and, and really what they're looking at, I think one thing to really take away, and I know, you know, specifically with, with this group and in this conversation, um, we're thinking of OTT and video um, and Hispanics more than any other segment in the U.S. Uh, really consume video. Um, and when we talk about video, we talk about, um, you know, any digital device. Um, so how they're consuming video on their phones and how they're consuming video 
available on TV and, and through streaming products. Um, and they really over-index in the time that's spent and, and the amount of, of, of content that they're consuming. Um, and that's only continuing to grow. We're seeing that number last year specifically um, grew even more. Um, so there's really an opportunity um, through OTT uh, and through some of these new, new streaming um, devices and, and services and products to really reach this audience, um, reach them when um, they're, be, you know, they're, they're captive, um, they're, they're looking for content that speaks to them, that reflects them. Um, and that's really what, what Sebastian and I um, really focus uh, our, our time in, in, in doing. Um, I think we wanted to break out specifically, you know, even for this group, I think numbers like this are really interesting. You know, so when we look at Hispanics and, you know, Hispanics are not just one large group, um, you know, there are different ages, uh, they have different language preferences, different um, countries of origin. Um, but when we look at them and we kind of look at uh, language pre preference and, and sort of how they break out um, from a streaming usage perspective, um, we see that, you know, again, SVOD um, is, is definitely um, uh, important um, and they're definitely heavy users. Um, but one thing that's really important is how that shifts with the language preference. So when we look at Spanish dominant Hispanics that primarily speak Spanish in the home um, and consume primarily Spanish language content, um, that number increases um, and, and the percentage of AVOD increases with that as well. Um, and so these are breakouts of, of just streaming and, and sort of how that, that looks um, by language. Um, Another thing that we take a look at is age groups uh, and sort of how they break out by age. And, and the one thing, again, focused on that Hispanic, Spanish dominant, because, you know, it is an underserved group. Um, and, and while, you know, in English and, and if we think of, of the U.S., there's so many opportunities for content and so many um, different avenues. In Spanish, um, the, the opportunity uh, and, and the, the products and, and availability is a little less. And so when we look at this specific group, we see that, you know, streaming really cuts across all ages. Um, the, the Hispanic Spanish dominant uh, consumer and audience is really online. It's, it's streaming content across ages. So, you know, it's really almost, um, I would say almost equal um, when we look at those that, that are streaming content um, and, are, and are looking at content. And here, um, you know, thought it was valuable to just look at the, at the group as a whole um, and look at the total audience and then sort of how that breaks out, um, breaks out by, by, by language. Um, um, it's not just uh, the young consumer that is streaming. Um, it really, uh, you know, spreads across all, all the different uh, ages. And I don't know, um, Eric, if this is a good time. I know that's a lot of uh, a data dump there that I did. If this is a, a good time to stop and uh, ask some questions uh, or answer some questions, I should say, um, from the group, and then I can I can turn it over to to Sebastian on the back. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, definitely some great data. Um, really, uh, I'm I'm interested in digging into it a little bit um, as well. For for those of you that are uh, that are watching, please do. Um, Drop some questions into the Q and A bin for for um, Natalia. Uh, we'd love to hear them. I think it's really um, a, a great stat. Uh, the well, it's not a great stat, but it's really good to have it have visibility to it. That five point five percent of the screen time um, is devoted to um, uh, you said it's Latin or Spanish. Um, um, uh, population yet they're the population and this is the US is that right in your Correct, correct. So, so what that study was looking at was the percentage of screen time where there are Hispanic characters or storylines uh, on on TV and and in the theaters. Um, and so that's a, a very big comp comparison to the audience that is consuming the content. So if you think about it, you know we want to create stories for the 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 broader um, sort of group in the U.S. So you know when we think of Hispanics, many times they're the first ones to buy that 
movie ticket uh, or mm -hmm. sign up for that subscription service. Um, but when they log on, they don't see characters that reflect who they are or storylines that tell their story as U.S. Hispanics. And so really that's what that's looking at. Um, and for brands, that's a great opportunity because, you know, there are so many, um, you know, there's, there's young Latino movie directors and writers, um, you know, there are, um, you know, outlets like Univision um, that spend so much of their time and, and, and um, really, you know, focus on super serving this audience with stories and characters. And, and really, that's where brands can, can really, you know, kind of connect um, with, um, you know, with whether it's publishers or, or screenwriters um, to, to connect to these consumers. Yeah, it's, you would think that that would be um, a very, very, well, it's a very, very powerful um, uh, audience. And, um, you know, I think, I, do you know anything about the trends? I mean, the 5.5% is extremely low. Um, has that been increasing or do you know if that's kind of been stable? I think that, that so that number um, was just released by Nielsen last summer. So that's a pretty current, you know, that 5.5 .5 is pretty current. I think, um, and I think, you know, for, for, for those that, um, even saw over the weekend the Golden Globes and, and sort of are tuned into to conversations about content. Um, I think that, you know, as a whole, um, many are looking to increase sort of how multiculturals and ethnic groups are represented in content. So I expect that number and I hope that that number continues to grow. Um, and, and then there's opportunities, uh, again, and, and Sebastian will touch upon this in a minute, but, you know, um, there are outlets like Univision um, and and others that uh, you know super serve this audience and create content that's specific for them in language, in culture, um, and that's really where a lot of the brands come to connect to this audience uh, because you know because th this is where a lot of, of the audience goes to to see themselves reflected and 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 receive content and news and so forth uh, in their language. Yeah. Um... I don't know, maybe you had a stat about this. And this is all U.S. Is that U.S. or is it also Correct. This focused? is, yes, all U.S., U.S. Uh, uh, Hispanic focused. Correct. So is it, I, I think you had a, a stat about this, but the kind of the percentage of the breakdown between um, viewers that are Spanish dominant versus English dominant. Um, was, it seemed like it was about half and half. So, so that, and that's going to depend on um, on the service and and you know the channel, and so that that varies just like age does. So you know um, it it can depend overall, and I don't have that stat in here. Um, it's something definitely we can follow up with. But you know when you look at the overall U.S. Hispanic audience, um, there is still a, a good majority. Uh, I would say about thirty five percent. The last time I looked at it, that that are Spanish dominant. Um, and, but the interesting thing is, is, you know, when we think of Spanish dominant, we also have this younger generation, um, you know, millennials and Gen Z that um, still consume content in Spanish. And, you know, that depends on what they're consuming. So sports, um, soccer is, is, you know, one of those that's consumed largely in Spanish music. Um, you know, there, there are, it, it can vary, um, but Spanish is still a very important part uh, and a very important sort of piece of the puzzle when we look at, at, at the Hispanic market in, in its totality. Okay, so we have a question, uh, Natalia, from yep. um, Munir Tascar. Uh, the question is, um, how does European made Spanish content from the major Spain-based studios resonate with US Hispanic and Latin American audiences? Great question. And I didn't hear the first part of that, so I apologize. <laughs> oh yeah, um, I'm sorry. How does European, essentially how does um, content that's uh, made in Europe um, as Spanish content, so made in Spain uh, from major um, studios in that territory resonate with Hispanic and Latin American audiences here in the US? Um, and I and I I will start in full transparency. I don't have a, a ton of background in Spanish uh, uh, content specifically made in Spain, um, but I will say that for us, we have found that whenever you can provide this audience with 
content that is high quality, um, that like anything else is, you know, has a good storyline um, and is available in language, it does very, very well. Um, we've seen on our platform that, you know, uh, movies not only from Spain, but Colombia, Venezuela, even believe it or not, some other European countries when they um, are available in Spanish language um, do really, really well. Um, you know, this audience is no different than any audience. You give them a great storyline, you give them great characters, mm -hmm. um, and you make it available for them in their language, and it's going to resonate. It's definitely going, going to be something that, that they tune into. I'll great. just chime in real quick, and just a hello to the group. I'm, I haven't spoken until now. Um, on that last question, I think Nadalia, you know, hit that home in terms of if it's of high quality, it's of stories of relevance, um, I mean, the global content market in the last four or five years has really kind of connected all the dots because of the distribution platforms that we didn't have 15, 20 years ago. So now you're seeing some of these great story arcs and these great, um, you know, productions from not only Spain, but, you know, some of the most popular novellas, uh, both in the U.S. and Latin America are from Turkey. Um, so, you know, if the story has relevance, if, if it's, you know, if it connects on some of the cultural cues, you know, language is something that, that we can, you know, either localize or, or figure out a way to, uh, to correct. Mm -hmm. But there's no doubt we're, we're looking at all those options. And I think that's something we've seen in the last three or four years because of the distribution platforms that are available today versus, you know, 10 plus years ago or less that um, it's, it's truly, it travels. Content is traveling now more than ever. Yeah, and hold that thought too on, on localization. Well, uh, the, uh, the OTTX Summit that's coming up just next week, we'll have um, uh, an opportunity to talk quite a bit about um, international distribution and uh, one of the topics, obviously, localizing content, very important um, for, for this, um, in, in this specific topic as well. Um, here is uh, one more question from Tanya Hong. Thank you, Tanya. Are you able to share data pre-COVID and how COVID impacted this data? Um, we're a uh, good assumption would be that the numbers increased uh, for this audience, for the Spanish audience um, since COVID, given they are um, so um, uh, mobile focused already. Yeah, and I think that's, that might be, and I'm going to pass it over to Sebastian, that, that's a, a good segue um, over to, to the rest of the group of slides, because I think it starts off with a couple of key um, uh, bullets on on 2020 and kind of what we saw the growth um, last year at, at, for Hispanics and just overall. Awesome. Does that sound well, good, Sebastian? Yeah, thank you, Tanya, for that great segue. The, uh, the check is, is well, I wish I could say the check is in the mail. <laughs> it's, it's not. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, Natalia. Sebastian, take it away. All right, great. So um, I think up to this point, just to recap, you know, Natalia walked you through um, a handful of slides on who this consumer is, right? And, and some of the things, some of the takeaways are clearly from a cultural identity standpoint, it's at an all time high with this community and this consumer. Um, it's, it's all about inclusion. They wanna be seen. Um, and and there's, there's clearly an opportunity here for uh, you know, marketers and brands, which is part of why we're having this discussion today um, on tapping into this consumer segment opportunity. And uh, you know, last year was an incredibly challenging year. On, on all fronts. Um, I, there wasn't a single industry uh, that was spared. Uh, but one thing we did see is the future of streaming uh, officially arrived last year. Um, and 2020 broke all records in terms of video consumption. And that is not gonna slow down. If you look at you know, how it compares to 2019, which I think is a little bit of, of what we heard in this last question, streaming consumption across all video options was up 74% in 2020 versus 2019. And Americans in streaming capable homes spent about one fourth of their time with the TV glass streaming video content. Now, if you look at this really difficult and elusive demographic group of 18 to 34 year olds, 50% of their TV time is, uh, is spent streaming content. So this is really important if you're a brand looking to target this consumer group uh, beyond what we've already covered as far as the Hispanic uh, community and the Hispanic consumer themselves. Uh, it's definitely a demo regardless of language that all brands are, look, are looking to attract and, and to target in some way. Let's go to the next slide, please. So if we look at you know, the Hispanic consumer and, and the OTT um, opportunity and, and where these two things intersect, let's take a look at some of those market dynamics. So the US AVOD market 
um, has been growing significantly over the last few years. If you compare uh, the revenue numbers from uh, 2019 at roughly 8 billion for the market, uh, that's expected to triple to about 24 billion by 2025. So the business case is there, there's no doubt. Um, what about behavior and interest? Well, you look at Hispanics and they've already shown that they're more likely to stream. 21% are more likely to stream services than the average US consumer. So they're over-indexing on the interest and the behavior to adopt and, and use this type of delivery system or platform. And then we talked a little bit about language uh, during today's session. Hispanic millennials, which is again, going back to the importance of that demographic group and what it means to brands, they want more Spanish content. Uh, about half of them consider Spanish language content to be more relevant than English language content. And it's really important because it goes back to those, those two or three things we keep repeating, which is inclusion, uh, cultural identity. They want to see themselves in the content and the entertainment options that they are choosing. And then lastly, if you look at, you know, what does this mean uh, on more of a macro level uh, in terms of, this is truly an under, underserved uh, portion of the market. And the general market AVOD services uh, do not have full-fledged Hispanic offerings. Um, there might be a vertical or some specific section within um, those platforms uh, that have Hispanic programming, um, or it just might be an afterthought or it's just not there at all. So when you take a step back, this leads to a, a clear opportunity to connect with this consumer uh, via OTT, uh, via AVOD. And uh, if we go to the next slide, You know, it, it leads to, or begs the question, okay, what is the true Hispanic market opportunity? And if we go back to 2019, uh, to a Media Post article, it, it specifically stated, the Hispanic streaming video audience has not been consistently, strategically, or significantly targeted. So um, there was a survey conducted, about 1,200 Hispanics were surveyed, ages 14 to 54, um, English and Spanish, and there's three key Hispanic audience opportunities for OTT that comes out of this. Spanish preferred Hispanic Gen X and boomers, Spanish preferred Hispanic millennials and bilingual Hispanic millennials. And it's really important that there's a it's kind of a commonality here where there is this, this need for um, these younger audiences are yearning for um, this identity and this connection and all of it is tied back to language. Let's go to the next slide, please. So access and extensive content um, have the highest appeal among Hispanics. And if we just look at the top 10 elements and focus in on the top five, number one is a limited access to this content um, available on any device. Number three is a wide variety of content across multiple genres um, and interests and backgrounds to super serve uh, the consumer needs of an audience that uh, is well established and uh, they, 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 they do identify quickly with uh, high quality productions. Um, they do identify quickly with productions that are successful um, in, other, on other, in other territories, other markets, like we mentioned earlier on the call. Um, and you know, one thing that's really clear is they want this to be 100% free to be ad supported as an AVOD service. And then five, an extensive library of available titles. You have to have depth uh, when it comes to options, particularly on a VOD uh, type of setup. And um, that these are things, these are cues that, that were taken into consideration as Univision uh, built and uh, as we'll show you now in a second, uh, took a look at this market opportunity, not only for the industry, but also uh, how do we further extend the relationship, the, the longstanding relationship Univision has with this consumer um, as we move into the streaming space. Next slide, please. So taking a further look at this, at this, um, this survey that was conducted, if we read this slide from your left to your right, you know, the first viewer, um, this is what her, her position was on it or her um, understanding of it was, you know, what first caught my attention was the fact that it's free. After that, I like the unlimited access. Again, we're seeing that theme throughout. To me, that means that if I wanna watch novellas, I will get access to novellas um, I want whenever I want. 
And if you're a novella fan and you're on this call, you'll understand. It's, uh, it's an insatiable uh, appetite for a genre. That is the original binge watching, if you will, uh, in our industry as far as every night at a certain time. And the fact that you're able to, to do that and continue that habit um, and that interest on streaming is of, is of huge value to our, to our viewers. Uh, the second individual said, I love that I can choose, I can watch live or on demand. That's very important. Um, that means I can watch however I want, uh, however and whenever I want without ever uh, having to miss anything. So the live component is really interesting because there's a, there's a communal sense to um, this community from, from the standpoint of, of consuming content. Um, you're watching a novella together. You're watching maybe a soccer match together. This is a longstanding type of, uh, of approach to consumption in the Hispanic marketplace. So live has that connotation of, I don't want to be left out. I want to be a part of that experience. If we go to the next um, respondent, I'd like that it will be 100% in Spanish. Again, these are the cues. It's Spanish. It's about on demand. It's about live. It's about unlimited access. Um, you know, going back to the quote, I understand English. Uh, my husband doesn't. So if it's in Spanish, can we both enjoy it together without me having to play translator? Again, going back to the communal experience in many of these settings, um, having the ability to enjoy something in language uh, makes a world of difference. And then lastly, you know, for me, variety is key, having options, uh, particularly with all the different content opportunities that are out there. Uh, otherwise, I'll lose interest. It means I have more to choose from. Very important things that, that we took from as we, as we built out this service. Next slide, please. So we arrive at Prende TV, um, a premium content destination. Um, this is the first free ad supported streaming service built exclusively by uh, four US Hispanics in Spanish. Um, and you know, I'll just recap some of the things we've already covered, but it's really important. You have to have a wide range of content to be successful. And we're very fortunate at Univision to have an iconic and exclusive uh, relationship uh, with Televisa and uh, a time proven uh, programming slate um, and, and an opportunity for us also not only to, to expand on that in working with Televisa, but we're also looking to expand by uh, having curated content uh, experiences uh, from select partners that are yet to be announced. And then I go back to the live thing I mentioned just moments ago where a live television-like experience is incredibly important to this viewer. Um, it's recognizable premium content with branded and curated channels. But the idea of having an always on video and an electronic programming guide experience, it truly drives higher engagement. We've seen that already um, and it's proven uh, to work very well in, 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 within the industry. But even more so for this, for this consumer, for the reasons that I've stated, it's, it's part of that experience of, you know, day and time type of appointment viewing. Um, there's a way to do that and deliver that with streaming uh, and with the technology we have that gives you the sense and, and that, that same experience, but obviously in an OTT AVOD um, environment. Uh, deep on demand library, um, allowing users to enjoy content wherever uh, and whenever they want. It's really important to have that option there for the consumer. There may be a particular night where, you know, there's something they want to go and look for, whether it's an action adventure movie, whether it's a rom-com, a documentary, a concert. Um, we're going to have those capabilities on Friend to TV. And lastly, distribution. Without scale um, and without, you know, major uh, distribution, you're challenged. We're going to have um, access to Friend to TV across all major digital platforms with a focus on connected TV, where the bulk of what we're seeing so far, the consumption is taking place. And that brings us to the conclusion of the presentation. Fabulous, thank you, um, Sebastian and, and Natalia. Um, yeah, we have, we have plenty of time for questions. So um, please do um, uh, drop questions into the Q&A bin. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I think that this, you really highlighted what seems to be a tremendous opportunity um, and it's, Interesting how, um, how I mean, you've done a great job of highlighting the demographic and who's there, and it's a really valuable audience. So you know, I was like, this is, it's, it's really important that our content is increasing in its diversity and its inclusivity um, because it's important for us to all learn about each other. Um, 
And, but it's, even if that isn't <laughs> the only reason, it's great business. This is a tremendous way to grow your, um, to grow your business. Are, are you seeing other entrants in this space taking advantage um, or, or working to take advantage of, um, of that great business opportunity with this audience? Yeah, there's a lot of brands. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, there there is a, a handful of brands that are doing it right and have been doing it for, for many years uh, and really speaking to this consumer, in, not only in their language, um, but speaking to them in a way that's relevant. And when I mean relevant, I mean culturally relevant. So, you know, not just changing a message from English to Spanish, but really looking at what are the values uh, of this consumer? You know, what do they care about? Um, what are their realities? And, and sort of speaking to them that way. And then looking at the platforms, right? So that's where when it's specific to this conversation and when you think of OTT and the content and so forth, you know, taking the right message, the right language, and then, and then reaching them in the right place. Um, and I think that's what's really important when we think of, of the opportunity of OTT is this is an audience that is, it, they're not flocking to it, they're there already. They're mm -hmm. already consuming it. They're consuming it at all the different age groups. And I think, you know, some of the, the research that Sebastian just presented um, is really good qualitative information as, as you guys think of this platform, because it's really looking at and giving you a sense of what the consumer comes to this platform for. So they come for a variety of content and just the depth of content. Um, they are in many instances, although, you know, there's definitely a lot of SVOD services, they are lo also looking for AVOD services. Um, and so looking for opportunities that are that are free. And so, you know, and looking at being able to choose content when they want, you know, uh, and, and watching it at, at their pace. Um, so I think that there's a lot of value there in, in just what the consumer is looking at when they when they look to download an OTT service or when they're spending hours on, on a platform, you know, and and what's what is it that's most important to them yeah um any I, I, what, what about the other direction like content that's actually created originally in in maybe hispanic language in spanish and um targeting specifically a hispanic audience that actually does really really well with non-hispanic um audiences uh like for example um some of us may be interested in telenovelas um, I, are you seeing, you know, that kind of, um, that kind of, uh, um, demand as well? I mean, I think that goes back to the, to the original, when we mentioned about just diversity of content that's available. Um, and, and so we, you know, there, there are, um, some titles that are available in, in English, um, and there's some Hispanics that, that do seek that, you know, to, to, to look at, um, and consume content in English and, and they go back and forth and we see that behavior quite a bit as well. Um, you know, we do see that there is a bilingual Hispanic um, that, that, you know, may consume content in, in both languages um, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, well, I was thinking about non-Hispanics that want <laughs> Hispanic content and don't speak Spanish. <laughs> well, one thing we've heard over the years is that, that you mentioned novelas, there's definitely a lot of passion um, and a lot of energy around those those types of, of program experiences, and we have heard from you know, some of the uh, English mostly or English dominant uh, folks that that do want to consume the content. That there is a way there for them to bridge and and pick up this language or or culturally connect with maybe either their spouse or partner that yeah. does speak Spanish. So we have seen a duality right where it, it works the other direction it's obviously very clear in sports right when it comes to uh, you know, soccer and some of the things that Univision is the home to there's opportunities there where you do see an influx of English language consumers that you know they're, they're looking for the content and I think that's what's changed probably we, that's kind of the theme of this call is that the fact that OTT has provided and connected the dots that before were disjointed and, and by us bringing now this brand new product to the market, uh, we're hoping to further extend, you know, a, a fantastic relationship that Univision has had from, from a linear standpoint with consumers, but more importantly, you know, the brands are also looking to further connect with this elusive demographic, whether it's 1834 or the millennials, that, you know, was, was perceived in the past to be more English dominant or bilingual, and they may continue to be so, but culturally, they still need Spanish to bring it home. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, we, we talk about this uh, in, 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 at, at OTTX and with some of our members and, and our board and with our impact awards that the, the work that we're doing and that our members and our whole industry and ecosystem is doing is really a, a fantastic connector across, um, across races, genders, beliefs, yeah. um, you know, and, and it's helping, I think it really has an opportunity to close, uh, break boundaries and to, to help people understand each other better. Uh, and and it's, it's super important and, and really valuable. And, and, you know, we are entertaining, but we're also, um, because of OTT and the accessibility of content now, um, we, we have the opportunity to really have a big impact. Um, I have an interesting question here. I think I want to get to it. Um, can you talk a little more about the opportunity in Hispanic OTT as it relates to kids' content? Do you want to go, Natalia? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that, so the short answer is I think that's a huge opportunity for twofold. One is, I think, you know, we see from the research that there is a, a big segment of the Hispanic population, especially even the, the younger segment that wants to continue that language and, and wants to uh, pass on the, the Spanish language to their kids. And so, you know, having uh, kids content in language on an OTT app is, is a huge opportunity. Um, it is one um, that uh, I, I believe, stay tuned, will be, I think there's gonna be more, more news to be shared there. Um, but I think, I think it's, you know, co-viewing and, and being able to provide content to US Hispanic families in Spanish for their kids is, is a huge opportunity. Um, and one that, I, that, you know, I hope that there's, there's more and more content uh, available uh, in, in the future. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good point. Um, I, I think that when you were going through the some of the the, the, uh, the data about uh, content um, that is most uh, has the highest demand uh, among Hispanic audiences, um, I don't remember where kids' content uh, was on that. Was it higher on the on the list or or less high? Um, I think Sebastian, that was one of I. I don't remember that specifically broken out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think we have a we had a breakout unless I the I, type of content. I may have mentioned something about about family and co-viewing. The uh, you know it it also you know kids programming you're you're limited also to you know so many hours in the week and so many time slots right, right historically. So um, you know you don't you don't necessarily see. Uh, kids programming, and that's all about the change, obviously, what we're discussing with OTT. But on the linear front, what you saw for many years was, you know, prime time was reserved for novellas or general entertainment uh, mm -hmm. programming. Um, and I think, to your point, and I think Natalia, you know, struck this just a moment ago, you know, we're seeing um, an opportunity here from an educational standpoint, right? Some, some, ki some kids are picking up languages when they go to school for the first time, whether they're predominantly speaking Spanish at home, they're actually picking up English as their second language when they go to the school for the first time. So one of the things that's interesting is that, you know, having a, a, a deep, um, I guess you want to call it vault of kids programming, um, not only leads to the co-viewing experience of the family, but also you know, there's multiple ways of, of targeting this different age, these different age groups within kids, right? To either be educational, just entertainment based um, and, there's no doubt that as, as part of a consumer group, it's one of the youngest consumer groups in the country, as we grow out, uh, kids are gonna play a huge part of that, you know, that conversation. And then that stems right back to the brands. You know, are they talking to the head of household? Are they having an opportunity to you know, either put their products or service in front of these people? And uh, I think kids are gonna be a huge growth opportunity and engine for, for the OTT space, particularly in Spanish. Yeah, it sounds like it's, there's potential for it to be um, a, a very, very important and maybe potentially untapped uh, in some respects. Um, another question here about um, COVID. Um, sorry, I lost. Oh, here we go. Um, how, how has the recent surge in cord cutting brought on by the pandemic in particular changed brands' interest in targeting the Hispanic market? Um, you know, I think, I'm not sure that there's a straight correlation of, of, of the cord cutting. I mean, I think 
we'll start from the very beginning of the presentation and just Hispanics overall and, and sort of the value there. And I think, you know, just looking at the opportunity, um, I think brands are, are trying um, and looking to reach this market everywhere, um, you know, pre and, and post COVID. Um, that includes obviously OTT, um, it includes linear, it includes audio. Um, and, and, and really, you know, I think that the, the most important part is speaking to, again, go back to the very beginning and it's, you know, connecting to the audience in their language, uh, in, in relevant spaces uh, and, and where they're at. And I think, you know, definitely OTT is, is, is definitely one of those places in addition to, to many other touch points um, that, that, they, that they continue to, to, to be and, and, and all the different media that they continue to, to consume. Yeah, and, and well, and, you know, as I think as brands um, learn more about this market and about this audience, um, it's going to continue to drive de de demand. And, and um, you know, that's you know, definitely uh, something that where there's money, that's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's where it goes. Um, okay, so uh, this question about the data, maybe you can, um, if you don't have this, help us out with this later. Um, for the half that consider Spanish language more relevant, um, speaking of the slides that you shared earlier, do you have a breakout for this um, per, um, percentage by age category? So you break the age category, or categorize by age, those that consider Spanish their most um, relevant language. Yeah, so we don't have it in the deck, but for years, Nielsen has conducted a, a language stratification study mm -hmm. that this one specifically, the one I think we mentioned in the, in the presentation was about streaming. But yeah. there are numbers, we, we can get you that information. And it yeah. is broken out by, by demographic. And it's, I said, English mostly, Spanish mostly, bilingual. Um, they, they've been doing this for a long time because of the need. And, and frankly, there's just a, an interest, I think, from brands who particularly, uh, for whatever reason, want to target either bilinguals or Spanish dominant equally. Um, it's great to have that data so we can get you that. Fantastic. Yeah, that would be great to have. We'd love to have you back. Um, this is, you know, I, as you, I think you said, Natalia, there is, a, um, you could talk for, um, for a really long time about this, this topic and each one of these, I think. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I hope that uh, those of you have, who have joined us today um, I feel like you're getting some, some very valuable insider information. So hopefully you take advantage of that. And uh, as I mentioned, thanks very much. We'd love to have you back and hope to see you. Our pleasure. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you to everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.